It's time to take a ride on the Steelers Afternoon Drive with our co-hosts, Alan Saunders and Zachary Smith. Welcome into another episode of Steelers Afternoon Drive. I'm Zachary Smith. That is Alan Saunders. Alan, I went trick-or-treating. I was expecting a treat on this NFL trade deadline day. I got a trick instead. Nothing. I think we're just going to use this next half an hour to talk about all the moves the Steelers made. <laughs> just, I like it. On, we had, oh, we had 29 more minutes. I was expecting uh, Fire Canada at the end of that from the crickets. <laughs> from the crickets. <laughs> uh, quiet day, not just for the Steelers, but around the NFL. Uh, it did not seem like there were a lot of big moves to be made out there. A lot of the guys that we thought would be traded are still on the team they were on. Um, so, I don't know, I guess uh, a little bit surprising that Jalen Johnson wasn't traded. He is a guy that asked for a trade. The Bears certainly look like a team that should be trading away guys that are on expiring contracts. And there was a lot of reported interest out there. The Steelers, the Bills, the 49ers, and the Eagles, according to Jordan Schultz, were all interested in Jalen Johnson. And nobody apparently could meet what the asking price was. Um, which was reported mm. to be one or two day two picks. I don't know. Yeah. Smitty Sum's not, not really adding up there to me because I think he's a player that's worth that to all of those teams, maybe the other three teams even more than the Steelers. And, uh, I mean, but even I think the Steelers probably would have met that price for him. Confusing. Confusing day all around. Is it just with, with the case of that? Because it's, you know, I woke up to the news that he had, you know, been looking for a trade. It was granted him and his agent could seek that. Is it just a matter of time, you know, with how close it was to the deadline when that comes out for them to like, because it's a complex thing. Like any team that's acquiring him, got to be, I guess, not sure. Like you could use him as a rental, but for giving up, you know, a day two pick, I think that more than likely whatever team acquiring him is also going to want an extension done Certainly with him too. Yeah, and the certainly the Steelers. Teams, you know, maybe would be more in a rental market. If the Steelers were making that trade, they would need to have a conversation about what an extension would look like, look like. And I actually think that's probably the more likely reason that this deal did not get done, not just with the Steelers, with anybody, that the conversations mm -hmm. with uh, Jalen Johnson's agent about what an extension for him would look like, what their expectations for that, had teams like, Eh, okay, so this is definitely just a rental, and now do we want to trade a couple of day two picks for just a rental cornerback? I don't know. So I think that's kind of where we're at here. Uh, it's now been reported he will he's going to go back to playing for the Bears, but he's not going to entertain any more contract extension negotiations with them. He's just going to go hit free agency and go hit the open market. We'll see. We'll see how this plays out. I'll be interested to see if he ends up getting a big deal or not, because it certainly seems like right now that's what the ask is, and that's probably why he was not moved today. I guess that's my question at this point is obviously you would have liked to have had him to help for the rest of 2023, but you know, could they circle back in free agency in 2024? This is a guy that they met with in 2020 at the NFL combine, you know, visited with him there. So there's interest. I think there's some familiarity there. So I wouldn't be surprised if this is the last time that the two are linked together. Yeah. And from a bear standpoint, you know, if you're not getting good offers and his expectation is he's going to become one of the highest paid corners in the league, then you're getting a nice big, probably a third round comp pick for him if he leaves in yeah. free agency. If you're the Bears, so you know if if the interest was softened by those contract demands, the Bears are only going to go down so far before it's not worth it to them to make the trade anymore. You know they need to get something more substantial that they would be getting in compensation anyway. And so I think that's probably why he's still a Chicago Bear. Also, just in general, you know, you, you look around the league, um, a very weird trade deadline, right? Not that many teams out of it, of course. Not that many teams look like pure sellers at this point. And uh, so, you know, you'd think prices would be high. Of the moves we saw that were made, though, I didn't really feel like that was the case. You know, you see Chase Young get traded for a third-round pick, and you're like, that's downright reasonable. Montez Sweat went for a second. Um a couple other, you know, maybe a handful of moves, six or seven. Um, Josh Allen, or I'm not sorry about Josh Allen, Josh Dobbs uh, goes for a, a late round pick swap. You know, it seemed like the prices on the deals that were made were low, 
and yet there still weren't very many of them. I, I, just a very, very strange deadline to me. Well, to that point, when I saw, you know, Washington move, move both edge rushers, I was like, okay, we might be, you know, open for business here. Like, when are we going to see some action with the Broncos? Assuming Jalen Johnson was also going to be moved. I was like, oh, this could be a pretty active deadline with those two going for the prices that they did with Washington. Um, also surprised that they traded both of those guys. But of the deals that were done today, I mean, Rizal Douglas maybe going from Green Bay to Buffalo is like the one that you could have said the Steelers maybe should have fallen back into if it wasn't going to be uh, Jalen Johnson, you know, but they gave up a third. Obviously, they did a fifth back too in that deal Buffalo did. But that was the one to me where obviously same position. If they were in the corner market, they maybe could have pivoted to. Um, but, you know, I don't, I don't know if they were even involved with that at all. I didn't see his name linked. No, I'm not sure that they were. You know, I think the Steelers kind of settled on Johnson or or made like here's the other part of this too is that like I, I think the Steelers were trying to trade Levi Wallace. Um mm -hmm. and I think they you know they felt like if if they got Jalen Johnson and traded Levi Wallace, they were making a serious upgrade to their cornerback position. I'm not sure how much of an upgrade they consider Russell Douglas over Levi Wallace, you know, like they, they don't have a hole that they need filled. They want to make an upgrade. Uh, whereas Buffalo has some injuries and they're just like, Oh, we just need a guy. I actually thought that if things worked out right for the Steelers, they could get Johnson from the bears and trade Wallace to the bills like yeah. one in and one out. I really think that's the way that Omar Khan was trying to get the day to fall. It just didn't fall that way. The bills end up getting Douglas instead and the Steelers end up not having a move to make. And so, but I thought they could have made that pair of trades and really not given up. You know, maybe you end up with like a similar layout, right? You trade a third to the bears and maybe you get a fifth back, uh, you know, similar to what the bills end up giving up for Douglas. And, and you could, you know, that, that, that I thought would have been a really nice deadline for the Steelers, but just didn't work out for the, the reason that we talked about. And um, now we'll see how they use Levi Wallace going forward, because I think that's still pretty up in the air right now. Yeah, I, I want to ask you, too, and this is completely hypothetical, but just getting your opinion on this, because I posted this like when it was it looked like there was four teams in the mix for Jalen Johnson being the 49ers, Bills, Steelers and Eagles. And of those teams, like how much calculated risk goes into that? Like you saw the Steelers last year say we want the Bears second round pick as opposed to the Packers second round pick because we think they're going to be a worse football team. If all those teams were offering like same round type pick, how much do you think that that goes into the team's mind as well? Like we think like with calculated risk, this team is going to be picking higher. So we would take their offer. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, of course, you also have to deal with like, man, I don't know if the Bears want to deal with the Steelers anymore. Like, there's uh, a yeah, lot. People, of, yeah. th there's a lot there, right? I mean, you can. That that's certainly a thing, man. I mean, I, that's think about your fantasy league. Like, there's some guys just like, ah, I just don't want to <laughs> deal with that. If that guy wants him, I don't want to trade him. That's it. Like, I'm done with that. I got beat too many times. Uh, like, I think there's there's some of that probably, but yeah, I think the if, if every team was offering the same round. Uh, the Steelers certainly had an advantage over those other teams. I think the fact that he was not traded at all kind of says a lot about where the teams in general saw his value compared to what the Bears calculated his value to them being if he stays in place for the rest of the year and leaves and, and they get a comp pick for him. So we'll see how it plays out. But, you know, trend breaking here, you know, Steelers for the first time since 2019, don't make a move to the deadline for the first time since 2018, don't make an in-season trade at all. That has certainly become a thing that they have been making part of their game plan. Uh, it sure seemed like that was Omar Khan's influence on Kevin Colbert at the end of things. And then Omar taking over as general manager was certainly an aggressive trader last year. Um, trader. That's wow. He wasn't a trader, <laughs> traitor. He was a trader. Real Benedict gotta, Arnold. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah. So I, I'm surprised. I, I said I'd be surprised if if they stood pat. I'd be surprised if Levi Wallace is a stealer, and they stood pat, and Levi Wallace is a stealer, and this is my surprised face. I guess <laughs> you are. You seem very surprised. We need um, one of your hats. We need one of your emoji hats with the just a. You know. Like, yeah. There we go. <laughs> on the way i need to get, i just need to get a bunch of them yeah for every emotion that we could possibly have 
on this show. Um, but you mentioned uh, right there talking about Levi Wallace, what the plan could possibly be for him. And that's a question that I have. Okay, so they didn't do anything here. They're going to have the same secondary. And you're also not going to be without Minka Fitzpatrick for a little bit of time here. Who knows how much time here. So how in the world do they reshape this secondary in the absence of Minka Fitzpatrick with no outside additions? Well, I think the best way to do it is to make Patrick Peterson be Minka Fitzpatrick. I think that's really the answer to the question, the way I see it. I mean, I, I think that's – it's really a no-brainer, right? I mean, we're t- Mike Tomlin's been talking up his versatility, talking about how he's Cam Sutton. And obviously, he's not been playing that well at outside corner. Um, mm-hmm. Not that Wallace is either, but given the n- – not having Minka, I think to me – Patrick Peterson does the best job of replacing Minka Fitzpatrick of anybody they have on the roster. They can play him in the slot. They can play him at free safety some uh, if they want to do their three safety thing. And I think really that's got to be the answer is that you're going to see Wallace and Porter outside Peterson in the slot, maybe some of Peterson playing safety and, you know, Casey and Neil are going to have their role. Casey will probably continue to play, you know, most of the, most of the snaps and then Neil will play some when they want to be a little bit heavier. It'll depend on the matchup too. You know, this is a Tennessee Titans team that plays a lot of two, you know, plays a lot of tight end, you know, that Chica Conquo is a big part of their game plan. They're not really a deep wide receiver threat team. You know, after D hop, it's like Westbrook Akine and I don't even know who the third one is. Like there, there's nobody good. Traylon there. Burks, right? I mean, he hasn't been, he hasn't lived up to that pick, but yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Traylon Burks. I, I just think it's not a team that is going to try to spread you out and make you defend with multiple cornerbacks in multiple places and that kind of thing. So, you know, I, I just think it's, it's probably a, a heavier package kind of game for the Steelers. Might seem to play more base defense, you know, going forward too and just not have as many defensive backs on the field, I think that's probably reasonable. I think their defensive linemen have played generally better than their secondary has. Um, Doesn't mean you can do it always, but, hey, TJ Watt dropping into coverage. Could give up, like, three touchdowns in his passer rating against would still be great right now because he's got got that interception. He's doing just fine. Um, I don't know. Might might have to be part of the answer. They're going to have to do some things differently without Minka Fitzpatrick, and I don't. I would be surprised if this is only a one week absence. I think this is yeah. going to be a, a thing that they're going to have to deal with for a couple of weeks here. And so, yeah, that's the way I would do it. I think they have the they they have the thought of doing it that way. Going to have to take some lumps with Joey. He's going to continue to make some mistakes. Growing pains are there, but you can also see the talent coming through. And um, you know, hopefully, it continues to minimize the errors and and accentuate the strengths going forward uh alex highsmith at slot corner you know like that buffalo preseason game yeah right <laughs> i mean they for an outside linebacker four, they ran some four four against uh, against the jaguars and thought it looked pretty good so don't don't knock it i yeah, we've we've seen him drop some. Hey, like I keep, I mean, I feel like I've mentioned it so many times, but we saw Alex Highsmith get his first pick before he got his first sack in the NFL against Lamar Jackson. He's got some coverage jobs. He does. He does. I think the um, four four is interesting. Uh, it kind of gives I, away your coverage, but like, yeah, well, nobody's running against that. I'm sure of that. Mm-hmm. Um, two, you know, more on the developmental side, I guess, pieces that ha- have been here, like Darius Rush, you know, could he be part of the equation going forward to who they've brought in? Or is he strictly, you think, going to be a guy that maybe has like a special teams role, but they don't want to actually give him defensive snaps in 2023? Yeah, I would assume that this is going to be kind of a special teams year for him just to get, a, you know, get in tune with the system and see what he can do get familiar with the person by the way great dude um very personable uh but yeah i think this is probably a year where they're trying not to play him they're trying to give him this year to develop and learn you know it's really yeah. hard when you're a young player and you don't have a training camp and he did have a training camp obviously but it was learning the colts defense you know and and so it's it's really hard uh to not have a training camp and to jump right into things as a young player He's a guy I think they like going forward, but you know, probably I think more like next year. Yeah, you know, this feels like a real audition for James Pierre. You know, he's been around in this role for a while now. 
Uh, we're going to get to see whether he can prove his worth to the point that you know they're going to try to re-sign. He was a free agent last year, and and they re-signed him, but they they cut him first, so they didn't have to pay him a b- you know big money. Like feels like this is kind of um, uh, you know. I'm, a use it or lose it kind of year for James Pierre. He's got to prove that he deserves to stick around at this point, or they're going to move on and they can go with the young guy rush and we'll see what happens. I, I think, I think their best defensive back lineup right now though, involves all three of those guys, Peterson, Wallace and Porter on the field at the same time. Pierre's good depth. Rush is good depth as well. And I was a little surprised that when, Minka got hurt in that game. They went to Miles Killebrew as the third. I, that's who I was going to ask about Elijah next was Killebrew. Riley. Like yeah. I think Elijah Riley is a far better safety than Miles Killebrew, mm-hmm. unless you really just need someone to play like in the box down against the run because Riley's kind of little. But like other than that specific role, I think he's a better man cover. I think he's a better zone cover. I think he's faster more agile I, I feel like he has better instincts for for getting to run fits and and breaking up those like flat plays and and slot stuff that the people love to run you know he, he's versatile enough that you can put him out there and you're not giving away your intentions by him stepping onto the field he could be a slot corner he could be a free safety he could be a strong safety half field center field um he can kind of do it all so i was really surprised that it was killer brew and not riley yeah. i kind of think that was probably a mistake i would go to riley we'll see what they're gonna do this week um i don't know but i i think he's probably the better option yeah i was gonna ask if you felt like that was maybe just like an in-game thing but now like after the game having a couple days to prepare for a different team it would be elijah riley well maybe but you remember when minky got hurt against the browns it was Riley. it was yeah that's true you know and so I don't know. It was strange to me. Yeah, zero. It's not even like like it was what like sixteen snaps for Killebrew on defense to zero for right. Like he didn't play at all on defense despite yeah. that. Yeah, it was very very strange to me, and I I don't really understand it. Um, you know, Killebrew's a good pro, uh, good special teamer, but you know, Mike Tomlin gets asked about it. it was like, oh, he's been a starting safety in this league and for like a tanking Lions team seven <laughs> years ago. Like, come on, Mike. Like, let's be real. Like this. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a I don't even know that they listed him really at like I, I consider him more of a linebacker than a safety. Like if you're going to have him as a defensive position. Well, so the Lions drafted him as a safety, then mm-hmm. you know, discovered that coverage is not really his thing, tried to move him to linebacker, and then just gave up on him. Um, and he started, like I said, four games for the Lions, three in 2017 and one in 2019. Like Let's not talk about this guy like he's uh, Mark <laughs> Brown, you know. Like, like, come on, like this is um, this is this is a special teamer, okay? And he's a special teamer for a reason. And I don't think it's a good idea for him to be playing as much as he did last week, especially against a team like the Jaguars that does have you know weapons like Etn and Ingram and and Ridley and Kirk that can really you know that's a dynamic offense. The Titans. This, this, this is actually a much better week. I would much rather have Killer Brew against Derrick Henry than against anything the Jaguars mm. are putting out there. Okay, well, with that, you know I'm going to ask it. And actually, somebody asked this in the YouTube anyway, so I guess I'll give them credit as opposed to myself. But um, with Minka out, wouldn't this be a game where you would make Braden Fajoko active? Wouldn't he be more important in a game like this? If we can get, if we can get the linebackers with free lanes to the running back, that should take some pressure off the safeties, right? I guess. <laughs> Look, I, I don't know. There's three games I would have played Braden Fajoko already. Yeah. I don't understand why they didn't. I don't think the Titans are more of a Braden Fajoko game than the Browns and Ravens and Raiders are. So I don't know. I I, I mean, we have to bring it up at least once a week on here. That's the There's thing. clearly so some up. kind of disconnect between what I've seen from Braden Fajoko and what the Steelers see from Braden Fajoko. Uh, I think he's a really good run defender. I understand that he's a one-dimensional player. I understand that he can only play a limited role, but I think that role is useful. And, uh, you know, it's not like the guys are playing instead of him or making big impacts. You know, it would be one thing if Loudermilk was out here, like, making a bunch of plays and with his 10 or 13 snaps. Like, 
that's that's not been the way it's been going. So I just don't, I, you know, I don't know. Um, I also, I mean, briefly, we know that like, obviously with Jalen Johnson stuff being linked, like it was on the defensive side of the ball, but like from an offensive standpoint, there was, you know, not really linked to anybody on the offensive side, stay and put there. Um, I mean, did it surprise you at all that didn't really seem like they were that interested in the pass catching market or anything like that? It, it didn't seem like anybody was really playing in that market. I don't know if like really, I, I, I thought Jerry Judy was definitely getting moved. So I was, yeah, Ju- wrong Judy that. and Cortland Sutton stayed. Nobody traded for Hunter Renfro. Like that, you know, there, there was, there were guys that certainly seemed like would be traded that were not. I know we've seen the, the you know, the prices in the wide receiver market be just outrageous over the last couple of years. Makes me think that the prices in that market were pretty high. And I just don't think the Steelers are in a position where they feel like they should be giving up big draft capital for a number three wide receiver that probably rather have those draft picks going forward. So if they get somebody cheaply, it might make sense. But uh, since nobody was traded, it makes me think there wasn't much cheaply going on there. Yeah, I, I agree. I just, I'm curious as to, you know, if they, they've obviously had conversations, those teams, they would have had to have been listening on guys like Jerry Judy and Cortland Sutton, Hunter Renfro, like what in the world were those teams asking for in those cases? Because to not move them, I, I can't see it. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what the, I mean, I guess. Yeah. Did any wide receiver get trade? Oh, uh, Donovan Peoples Jones, but yes. Which yeah. Like, came out of nowhere and mm-hmm. like why? And I, yeah, I don't even understand that trade. So yeah, I was trying to gauge like what the market price was, but I mean, that was what, like a sixth or something that he went yeah, for. Yeah, I think it was a sixth. So I don't even know. I mean, and he's not on the same level of no. you know, those guys. So, um, but okay, I wanted to actually. I, I there's probably some other stuff that we can get to, but I mentioned yesterday there was something I wanted to talk about on here, and that's Will Levis's first game as a pro. Uh, that he had obviously Steelers are going to see him had four touchdown passes in that game, looked really good in terms of connecting with DeAndre Hopkins, just throwing the ball down the field and giving him chances to make plays on the ball. If you've obviously you've seen the highlights from that game, but from what you saw from Will Levis, what do you think about his game and the challenges that he could present for the Steelers defense? Did you like him as a prospect? No, or no, you weren't. Okay, because it very like I wasn't. I I wasn't on the train either. But like, it seems like there were very few people that were in like that middle ground. It was either like you don't see it or you see it too much. I think there's real questions about a guy's like competitive drive when he transfers away. You know, goes to a. Let's be honest, like Kentucky's not Penn State. It's just not. I understand he's still playing the SEC, but it's not a place where you have the same kind of expectations, same kind of competition for a role. Then he didn't play at the Senior Bowl. He's a little bit of a not – in no way to, should is this meant in an offensive way, but he's a weirdo. Like he is. Like he's a weird guy, okay? Yeah, and yeah. like you look at a guy who's a little bit weird, who there's maybe some issues with his – let's compete level and i understand why teams were wary of spending a lot of draft capital on that guy to be their quarterback there's so much about the quarterback position where you you know you gotta have that guy it's why kenny pickett was a first round pick kenny pickett's arm is you know fine it's not it's good enough at the nfl level but it's nothing special his athleticism we've seen again you know it's okay he's not running people over or around them or or you know setting any speed records Kenny Pickett was a was a first round draft pick because you had faith in Kenny Pickett the person and I'm mm-hmm. not sure that that same faith existed for Will Levis I'm not sure that one game really changes that for anyone uh, he certainly has arm talent also like D hops doing most of the work there and uh you know well th- that's got to continue but if I'm the Steelers, I'm not particularly worried about Will Levis in this game. I don't feel like he is some kind of game-changing talent that they need to be concerned about. Talking about the stopping the Tennessee Titans, I'm still worried about stopping Derrick Henry first and foremost and kind of figure yeah. everything else out as it goes. Yeah. I, I mean, obviously in that game, he flashed the arm strength, but that was like, to your point, not the question that anybody had with Will Levis, you know, if everything matched what that arm strength was, he would have gone in the first round. So um, yeah, I'm with you though. Like when you look at the Tennessee Titans first and foremost, and I think that's going to be for every team, not just the Steelers, it's going to be about stopping 22 before anything else. And you will live with whatever that passing game is able to do. Also, that's why to your point about the Andre Hopkins, that's why when I presented it, I, I, 
Afford mentioned the fact that DeAndre Hopkins, he was just giving him chances to make plays. I mean, he scored three touchdowns in the game. Two of them were like really deep balls. So, I mean, credit to Will Levis for giving him a shot to make those plays. But, you know, DeAndre Hopkins is really the one doing most of the work there. Yeah. And look, D Hops, if you're, if you're talking about things to be worried about on the Titans, he's probably number two, right? I mean, he's a talented player. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But, you know, the, the Tennessee offense is all about getting into good down and distance situations so that they can take deep shots. And the, the, the way to stop that is to keep them from getting into good down and distance situations. It's about stopping Derrick Henry. And I'll tell you this, Ty J Spears is a player and is a serious change of pace. Saw mm-hmm. him at the senior bowl, man. He's awesome. Um, at some point the Titans are going to move on from Derrick Henry and there's going to be this like, Oh my God, what are the Titans going to do at running back now? Because they don't have Derrick. Ty, Ty J Spears is good. Like he, he'll be, they'll be fine. Um, he could be doing more than he is right now, but you know, they don't have the ball enough to, to, to share the carries more than they are, but um, be wary of him in the screen game. Be wary of him in the draw game as a third down back out of the backfield. I think he can really do a lot to hurt you. All those things concern me far more than Will Levis just going out there and like just yeah. dunk up on you. Like I, he's okay if you give him the opportunity to, he will. But it's more about his playmakers for me than anything else. Yeah, Tajay Spears has been really good, and he's been what I thought. Uh, they threw a fourth round pick at another Darrington Evans, uh, who's now with the Chicago Bears. He's he's. Taji Spears has turned into what I thought Darrington Evans was going to be as a change of pace there. And speaking of deals that didn't happen, Derrick Henry, DeAndre Hopkins, still on this Titans team, as we expected in a couple so days. So Sorrell Edmonds, who was the guy that I thought could get flipped yeah. after he came over from the Eagles uh, in the Kevin Byard trade. So we'll see uh, old friend Rel at uh, Strong Safety. Yeah, I assume he's going to start because I, I don't know who else they have. Let me, I mean, I can just check the depth chart here but i i assume that he's he's gonna start because they traded byard and they got um well i mean our lads has amani hooker a- ahead of him at strong safety so we'll see um but i you know i assume he's gonna play that was a guy i thought the steelers could try to pry away too like i guess i don't know strange strange all strange all around uh sean murphy bunting is another guy we talked about too potentially on, available as a uh, slot corner Christian Fulton. I mean, I didn't even yeah. hear much about any of these guys no, today. And like no. we talked about the pass catchers for the Broncos, but Justin Simmons, like no smoke with any of these guys really today. No, it Unless seemed like Jalen Johnson was the only guy that had like real smoke. Yeah. Didn't get me. So who's the other safety that plays next to Imani Hooker now, though? Elijah Bolton. Looking... Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. Gotcha. Um, Injuries. I wanted to bring up the injuries too, Alan. You uh, said on here yesterday that you thought Kenny Pickett was going to be able to go. Uh, Kenny Pickett, the quarterback himself, also feels that way, saying to the media that he was going to be able to go on Thursday. Obviously, doesn't surprise you at all that that's going to be the case. And I think it's another testament to hey, there's a lot of things that you can question on the football field when it comes to Kenny Pickett. Uh, the toughness of him is certainly not one of those things. Yeah, I mean, Kenny's Kenny's going to play if Kenny could possibly play. Let me just say that. And you know, he's he's a competitor and he's a tough kid. I had somebody ask me, like, do you think he's not big enough, strong enough, because he keeps getting hurt? I'm like, no, no, like he's big. He he's tough. Like it, I think he needs to learn how to not get hit so hard. Like I think that's part of the problem here, is that it's far too often we're seeing him make his own pressure, uh, run into to pressure not get rid of the ball, not identify pressure where it's coming and when. Like, that's been the big – so much about the way Kenny Pickett got better at Pitt was that he got more comfortable. And you Mm -hmm. just see a quarterback that is not comfortable a lot of the time. Doesn't feel like he's confident in identifying the way the pass rush is coming in. Doesn't feel like he – has faith in his blockers to give him time. It doesn't feel like he's confident in his wide receivers being where he expects them to be when he expects them to be there. He said today that a missed touchdown between him and Deontay Johnson, he was expecting Deontay to stop and not continue the route because the safety moved to the middle of the field and Deontay did not. And it just doesn't feel like he has that, absolute faith and confidence that his guys are going to do what he thinks they're going to do 
And in the NFL, man, if you're waiting to see the hands to throw the football, you're late. Like that's, that's how it is. Mm-hmm. All has to be out. Like, first of all, half the time, if you're waiting to see the hands to throw the football, you're sacked. Okay. And then the rest of the time, if you're waiting to see the hands to throw the football, you're late. And so it's just, there's not enough time to, to wait and see the guy come open to see his hands and then throw the ball. It has to be on trust and faith, both on the line to block it yourself to understand where the rush is coming from, what kind of coverage it is, where the right reads are, and that the receiver is going to see the same thing that you're seeing and get to that spot where the ball is going to be. It just does not feel like a quarterback right now that is feeling those things. Like he's Mm -hmm. playing like he doesn't have faith in his offensive line, doesn't have faith in his ability to read the rush. He doesn't have faith in his ability to read the coverage quickly. He doesn't have faith in his guys to see what he's seeing and to be where he wants them to be when he wants them to be there. Like that, that's, that's impossible to fix quickly. Like that is just going to take time uh, to get there. It doesn't mean that it can't happen. Um, Mm -hmm. But man, the line could help because they're not blocking very well. And I think they're better players than they've shown so far. I think that's really the biggest people talk about like what the, one of the biggest disappointments in the Steelers this year if we first and foremost has to be the play of this offensive line but we can talk about that more as we go forward um but yeah I mean I think uh I I think that's a long way to say I you know they've got to be on the same page more yeah yeah we can table the conversation about the offensive line because one of the biggest challenges they're going to be presented with I think when you would have looked at the beginning of the season, standing across from then Jeffrey Simmons is a really good player for the Tennessee Titans, and we'll see how that matchup holds up. But the last thing uh, I wanted to bring up, just some other injury notes here. I mean, Cam Hayward logging another full practice. If you're not watching, I put that in quotations there for you. Uh, Minka Fitzpatrick obviously didn't miss pr- or miss practice. Levi Wallace limited, and DeMonte KZ was, again, in quotations, full practice. Alan, what does this mean in terms of participation or lack thereof? Don't read too much into it. It was just a walkthrough. Interesting that they still listed Wallace as limited. I think they were just trying to trade him and trying to hold him out while they were trying mm. to trade him. But we'll see. Um, wouldn't uh, you know? They they got to do this again. Another practice report tomorrow. What and the, and Mike Tomlin said they're going to practice a real practice tomorrow. So it would not be surprising to me if tomorrow you see Kenny Pickett limited, Cam Hayward limited. You know uh, and. and something more approaching like what we expected. I still would be surprised if Cam uh, plays this week, but hey, I was surprised today. So what the hell do I know? Right. Yeah, that's the question. You know, it's an interesting balance because you'd love to get him out there, even if it's just like, you know, 15 ish snaps. But at the same time, like you got like a mini buy after that before the Packers game where you feel like he'd definitely be able to return for at this rate. So, you know, why, why push it for this one? Yeah, I, don't know. I agree. It's an interesting balance, but okay, we will uh, we'll leave it there for today. Alan, you can tell the people where to find you. At Saunders underscore PGH on Twitter, at PGH Steelers Now is the site's account. SteelersNow.com, that's where the words live. Read them so I can get paid. Promo code Allen10, get 10% off-ish of a one-year subscription to not just Steelers Now, but also Pittsburgh Baseball Now, Pittsburgh Hockey Now. You get all the great stuff from not just myself. and, and Derek, Derek Bell was right, by the way. Derek Bell was right confirmed stubby coverage uh me derek nick Fairbaugh, but also dave molinari dan kingarski john parado the whole gang it's cheap go do it sign up that's all there you, you go 10 ish percent off as well i mean i can't beat that <laughs> it still boggles my mind <laughs> I want I, like I have do I want to know what the actual percentage is at some point down the road here. I know, know I'm not well, I, I don't want to know. No, no, I don't want to know. All right. I don't want to know. I'll change it when I, if somebody figures it out. I'll change it just to mess with them. <laughs> there we go. All right, I am uh, Zachary Smith PGH. You can find me on all platforms. Like, subscribe, hit that notification here. Leave us a comment down below here. But if you're listening somewhere else that is not YouTube, be sure to leave us a five star review over there as well for Alan Saunders and for myself. Thanks for jumping in. Take another ride on the Steelers afternoon drive. Mm-hmm.